All right. Well, if you made it this far, I am shocked. But uh, there's a lot of features, and I just wanted to try to get them all out there. Now, let's take a look at some of the more technical benefits of optical flares. So first of all, optical flares renders in 32 bits per channel. So if we change our project file to 32 bits and we alt click on it, now we're in 32 bits per channel. So if we roll over the bright area here and we look at the info palette right here, you can see that the brightness goes all the way up to five, which is five times brighter than regular white. So if we added a box blur and turned it up, you can see that the hot spot in the middle of the flare is sort of overpowering the areas around it. Now, if I were to change back to 16 bits, you can see that the image gets more flat because it no longer has that, uh, that data. So 32 bits per channel, for those who know, it's a, it's a great feature and it sure makes sense to have it on a, uh, a light-based plugin. Now, another cool thing is that Optical Flares is GPU supported. Now, you may not have a video card that supports it, but if you do, you're going to get some speed enhancements. And by the way, with the GPU, it also renders up to 32 bits per channel. So whether you're working in 8 bits or 32 bits, you're still going to get some speed improvements. So going down the list here, now Optical Flares has a few options for rendering. Now, say I made my solid accidentally, you know, a different color than black. Well, usually you want to put a lens flare on black. So we have an option just automatically renders the lens flare on a black solid. Now we can set it to transparent and it will render over an image that's underneath it. Or you can set it to render over the original image. So now we have the lens flare on our red solid. Now I like to render on black and then set my transfer mode to screen so that I can actually composite it. And the benefit is it's easier to color correct when it's on black than when it's on transparent. So just a quick tip. Now another cool feature is optical flares renders in custom views. So here we have some lens flares that are being obscured and uh, you know we're in 3D space and I'm moving a camera around. But if we change it from the active camera to say the top view, we can actually see what our scene looks like and our lens flares render just so that you can see where the light is coming from. So here we actually have lights in those positions and so it's kind of nice that it renders and it's aware of the custom views. There's some other advanced features that really help you out while you're working and one of them is the ignore global parameters. So I can change the rotation and you can see all of my objects rotate. But what if I don't want this uh, star streak to rotate? So we'll go into the options, we'll scroll down to our streak element and uh, that's the one that's creating uh, that star. And if we scroll down in the object editor, we have some advanced settings. And we can say ignore global rotation. And we hit OK. And so then, if you rotate it, it no longer rotates that object. And you'll also notice there's a few other properties like ignore 3D perspective and brightness and scale. Now the ignore 3D perspective, if we turn that on, hit OK. Now if we move the camera close to it or further away, you can see that that star element is staying the exact same size even though we're getting closer to it. And that comes in handy in a number of cases. Another cool feature is optical flares allows you to change the center pivot point. So instead of having to make your lens flare really large for a flare that renders outside, you can change the pivot point um, of where everything is looking at. And it's also useful uh, for creating spotlight effects or just changing where things uh, are. So that's kind of a cool feature and uh, you know all the flares work that way. And uh, we probably already talked about this earlier but we have a dynamic color picker which updates as you change the settings. And uh, that's a cool feature and it's not something that is automatic. We actually had to build it uh, custom. Um, of course if you want the old one, go to the preferences and say use After Effects Color Picker. And uh, it's not live, but uh, it is uh, sadly familiar. So uh, either way, you can uh, get the best of both worlds or uh, you know just use ours. I don't know why you would use the other one, but uh, there's probably someone that is out there thinking, man, if only I still had that old color picker, I could get this job done. Well, fret not, sir. We have you covered.
All right, guys, this has been a pretty fun, pretty uh, in-depth look at optical flares. The cool thing, it's very easy to use. You can start with a small flare and you can build up to a complex masterpiece. Well, I'm Andrew Kramer, and we'll see you next time.